Welcome back to La Vota. We've been covering issues that are important in this election, and today we're talking about gun violence. Right now, gun violence is a leading cause of death for children in America. Last week, we asked our audience to send us any personal stories about how gun violence has affected them. Kimberly Rubio told us her story, and we'd like to share it with you. My name is Kimberly Rubio, and my 10-year-old daughter, Lexi, was watching a movie at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas, when an 18-year-old armed with an assault weapon walked into her school and murdered her 18 classmates and two teachers. On the morning of her death, Lexi received the Good Citizen Award. We celebrated what would have been Lexi's 13th birthday on Sunday at the cemetery. Leaving her that night was probably the hardest goodbye since the day we buried her. I think the first year, you're really numb, but the second year, it's just all coming to, and it's just so difficult to process that we're never going to see her again. We're never going to hear her. I wonder what she would be interested in now, who her friends would be, if she would have played volleyball like she always wanted to when she got to seventh grade. I'm most interested in how she would have reacted to this campaign because I can remember when Biden defeated Donald Trump. We were in Concan and walking along the river and I snapped a photo of my three daughters and I remember tagging it as the future is female because they were so excited to see the first ever vice president be a woman. And I know that I know when Kamala Harris wins, I'll be out there at her gravesite telling her all about it. Now, today we're lucky to have Kimberly on the line. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so sorry for your loss. And I'm a recent parent and hearing Lexi's story definitely got me um, a little choked up. So thank you again for sharing Lexi's story. Thank you for having me and allowing me the opportunity to share Lexi's story. Why do you think it's important to share Lexi's story with la comunidad? It's important to share Lexi's story because I remember my life before May 24th, 2022. I remember watching news unfold of yet another mass shooting, holding my kids a little bit tighter, a little bit longer, and not even being able to imagine what those parents were going through. And now I'm on the other side. And my only fault was leaving my daughter at school. Something moms do every morning all across this country without a second thought. So I need parents to be aware and to be voting for gun sense candidates before they're directly impacted by gun violence themselves. What changes uh, do you hope to see moving forward in this country? The election of gun sense candidates this November, but also the continued work of the first ever White House Office of Gun Violence Prevention, safe storage laws, red flag laws, universal background checks. We also have Vanessa Gonzalez. VP of Government and Political Affairs at Giffords, an anti-gun violence advocacy group to chat with us today. Vanessa, thank you for joining us. Yeah, of course. What are some actionable changes to help protect our children from gun violence? One of the first that we have to just name, and I know everyone has heard this a lot, but as Kim said, you gotta vote. You gotta vote for gun safety candidates. You have to get out there. The reality is, is that Latinos die at twice, nearly twice the level by gun violence across the nation than others. So we are also in particularly losing our men starting at age 15. They have a higher rate of death by gun. And that all comes to about 13 Latino deaths per day. So this is our issue. And we need to demand that people start talking about it and do something about it and then hold them accountable once they're elected into office. Because again, they work for us. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure that they are moving on our priorities. Are there any programs right now that can help fight for gun safety? Yeah, so there's a ton of policies that we can think about. Um, Kim mentioned a few and uh, I wanna again, second our support for the Office of Gun Violence Prevention. It is the first that we've ever had and the people who staff it are phenomenal and have lost people to gun violence and have actually been victims of gun violence themselves. And last week they just hosted, which Kim and I were lucky enough to be a part of the first conversation about the impact of gun violence specifically on the Latino community. 
And we've never seen that before. So this is when you think about the differences in the policies, like this is real and people are listening to us. Yeah, it seems like there's some kind of, again, hope, especially for Latinos um, and by Latinos. Uh, Kimberly, has there been any statements from Donald Trump or Kamala Harris have affected you this election? With regard to school shootings, Donald Trump said, get over it. J.D. Vance has said that shootings are a fact of life. I will never get over the death of my daughter, and I do not accept children being gunned down in classrooms. And throughout Donald Trump's campaign, I have been reminded of the El Paso Walmart shooting, which was carried out by a gunman who echoed the hateful rhetoric that Donald Trump has towards Latinos. And this is something that he continues today when he says things like immigrants are poisoning the blood of this country. But there's hope with Harris and Walsh. I have personally met with Harris on multiple occasions, and she is sympathetic of Lexi's story and eager the, the fight, eager to continue the fight to end gun violence in this country. So I stand with Harris for Lexi. Vanessa, can you speak on how an assault weapon ban could help? An assault weapon ban means that you sh would not be able to have these weapons of war around streets, right? There is no need. There's a lot of qualifications that go into exactly what qualifies as an assault weapon by law, but it is clear that it has one purpose, and that is during war times. Mm -hmm. There's no reason a teenager should be able to have access to it. There's really no reason for them to be on the streets. Are there any options for addressing the trauma after gun violence? So some of what we have seen is through the mental health investments that have been made um, by Biden and Harris and, and champions by the Harris administration. So there's additional funding, a couple of um, million dollars into the substance abuse and mental health services. So at the federal level, which goes down to clinics, there's also going to, like I said, an influx of funds for funding in schools and how to support children. Um, my daughter had a um, active shooter drill just this morning. And because of various reasons, it's really traumatizing for her, right? Um, but her school, thankfully, has social workers and therapists on site to help kiddos who have some, um, it's just really hard for them to process. Any final thoughts you two want to deliver to the audience before the election? Nobody wants to take your guns away. At Giffords and the partners I work with, we believe in the Second Amendment. I'm from Texas. We hunt. We do the whole thing, right? Nobody wants to take your guns away. But there is a rational way to approach guns and gun safety there's it doesn't have to be an either or so i think to hear the vice president say i, I don't want to take your gun away that was really helpful and it is true there is not this big conspiracy to do that okay there are a lot of issues on the ballot but the priority should be our children's safety they're our future so i urge you to get out there to vote to take lexi with you when you vote kimberly once again Thank you so much for sharing Lexi's story. And Vanessa, thank you for your work. Appreciate it. I honestly do. I, I, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Hi. Make sure you go out and vote for what matters on November 5th. This video is brought to you by Harris Waltz Campaign, reminding you to go to IWillVote.com to find your polling place and make a plan to vote by November 5th.